Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 48. Step next and continue with Pry Nav or Pry By Bug. In this episode, you'll learn how to use Step Next and Continue when debugging. If you'd like to code along, you can clone the Ruby Thursday example app with the following branch. That is the Ruby Snack just before this one, Ruby Snack number 47. So you get clone that, you CD into the app, you bundle, and then you Rails DB Create, DB Migrate. If you do not already have these gems in your gem file, you do need to add them. But which gem do you use? You use gem pry nav if you're using pry, and you use gem pry by bug if you're using by bug. So be sure you either have pry nav or pry by bug in your gem file and bundled. If you're using our example app, pry nav is already there. Here are the commands we're going to play with. First, step, and it does exactly what it says. Step execution into the next line or method. Takes an optional numeric argument to step multiple times. So you could step one, that's the default, or you could step two or three. Next, we'll step over the next line within any frame. Also takes in an optional numeric argument to step multiple lines. As you'll see, this jumps over certain things and goes over methods if you want to do that. Then continue simply continues the execution and ends the prize session. I've opened up the example app in my editor, and we're going to be playing around with the evaluation spec, and we're going to break something. Let's go ahead and misspell evaluation time and save that. So it's a method being called in my controller. So when we run the spec for creating the evaluation, we get an error. And we look and see it's on line 82. So that points us in a direction. But what if we weren't quite sure where the error was happening or what we're missing to cause that error? So we're going to go ahead and add a binding pry right here in the controller. That's generally where I use a step and next because mostly I use feature tests and not controller tests. So sometimes I need to dig into that controller. So I'm going to put in a binding pry right here above where we're going to add date to time and convert to UTC. So let's go ahead and run it again. And it will stop right above there. And then I can do several checks. I can make sure that we have the evaluation, make sure that did save correctly. It got there, so it probably did, just looking at it and see what's there. Okay, now I can use step. And it'll take me to the next line. And if you look in here, the editor will show you what line you're on right now. So it's going to call that method. So step will actually move into that method so we can see what's happening there. So we're going in to add to time and convert to UTC. So now we can step again. Okay, so then the next line causes that error. If you get a whole bunch of stuff you're not sure about, it's going into you know error mode. It's going to show you an error. Now, if you were going to try to dig in deep into active record, then you'd keep going. I'm just going to exit. I found exactly where the error is. Let me go see if I can find out more about it. But first, let's go ahead and show next and see how next is different. So here we are again in our binding pry, and now I'm going to click next. So then, yes, it goes to that next method. It's going to call that next. And then next skips over the method, doesn't go into it. And so now it's telling me, okay, I'm going to now serve you an error message. All right, so it went from here through there, and it did not let me into it, it just ran the whole thing. So it's going to the next frame. And if you want to just do that, that's great. So I'm going to exit and that's how I'm going to continue and it'll exit out of it. Again, I still have my error message and now we'll run it again. And let's step because I think step is more useful in this case. So let's step and we'll step again. I could have stepped two since I knew where I wanted to go. And now I can play around. All right, so I know the next line is going to give me trouble, so I can play around with what's in that line. So let's see what the things are that I'm adding together. So let's just find out what that is. And it gives me something that I'm expecting. Okay, well, it's now let's see what this is. 
Let's see if that's coming up what I expect. And it's not. It's nil. Okay, so obviously I've narrowed it down to this tiny piece of code, which helps a lot. All right, so now I can look at my params because I'm in the controller. And let me look for that time. Now I see that it is misspelled. Or if you have a nested form especially, you may need to figure out exactly how it's nesting, add those params in. That can be very helpful. So now I know exactly what I need to change. I put back in the I. It's usually a misspelling or a missing comma, isn't it? So now let's run it again. Oh, but first let's go ahead and take out the binding pry. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. If you want to leave it in, that's fine, but let me go ahead and take it out so I don't forget. So I'm going to save it, and I think that's what it's going to be. So let's run it again, and now it's green. Now it's all fixed. So that's a little bit on how to work through a problem using step and next to get to the part of the code that's giving you trouble. If you'd like more information about these gems, here are two links to PryNav and PryBuyBug. Thanks so much for watching this Ruby snack. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign on up. And if you are not already subscribed on YouTube, click that big red button to do so. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.